One, sorry about the last one. I actually didn't have good reception, so I decided just to stop that one and reopen. That one's gonna be erased. Susan Lennart here, it's 12 noon. I'm in my studio space, and um, I actually am going to, oops, sorry about that. I'm actually here today. Um, I, you know, I've done this progression of work with a lot of people. I'm a nomadic jeweler. I can work away from my studio or in my studio. Last week, my studio, I showed you guys my intimate space. I showed you guys my tools that I use when I'm in my space in my studio, which is jeweler's wheels and, you know, the, a lot of things there. Hi, Karen. Nice to see you. Hi, everyone. Good. I didn't know if anyone was on or not. I think there's a slight delay. Yay. Okay. So I'm actually, good morning, Christine. I wasn't seeing any comments, so I restarted it. I'll have to get rid of that last one. But um, so it's really fun. I'm so excited about this um, Alchemy of Soldering group and this whole kind of fresh way to bring your authentic self into your work. And that's really what the Alchemy of Soldering and Intentional Metal Smithing is all about is, you know, bringing your own work, bringing your own self, bringing what you want to do as a creator. You know, I was started off as a jeweler. I mean, I'm sorry, I was trained as an artist and then I moved into being a jeweler. So it's really important to me be, to be able to express my jewelry, to be able to express, hi everybody, to express what I'm doing. Yay, okay, perfect. Um, so last week, if you guys didn't see the video, so we have some recorded on the Alchemy of Soldering. I showed you guys my whole big studio, that's 1100 square feet, gave a tour. I also, last Friday, I showed just my little intimate area right here, the area that I use when I am um, here, you know, it's like, a, oh my gosh, a five by five space probably where I spend nine tenths of my time in my studio with my jeweler's wheel. It's a little bit more complex than my traveling, than my traveling kit. So that's, you know, what I showed you guys around Friday and talked about different tools. But um, this week, what I'm really interested in showing you is the nomadic, traveling bag and guess what i've got it right on my back did you guys know that <laughs> so i want to tell you this bag i don't have for sale you got as soon as i pull this bag out you guys are gonna love this bag i love the contents in here so this one is actually pretty heavy but i had this on the whole time i'm going to be wearing this backpack when i get around um in morocco when i get around in india when i go to mexico this whole backpack has that $250 kit, the traveling kit, everything in here. I can make all the jewelry that I'm wearing, you know, minus the supplies. I didn't even use this little area here, but everything's in here that I need for building this jewelry. And I have done it. You know, I've actually done it, which is really fun. So I want to show you guys the contents of this. And I'm also going to be answering questions too. So I just want to make sure some sometimes there's more questions asked good morning everybody yay good morning so you guys got to see this on me so sandy's here sandy was with the with with me when uh we actually got this bag and pam wolf so pam wolf has a identical bag and i have an extra one i'm gonna be doing um i'm gonna be doing like a, a huge uh promotion i've got an extra one i actually bought two bags i'm bringing these back from mexico i did lose a lot of tourist stuff that I didn't that I didn't necessarily want to do so so we're lucky this one is a little tough to open here but I'm going to show you guys and I'll talk about the tools as I go through them how about that I'll hold them up and talk about them okay look at this nice little pouch on the side I think it originally was for a water bottle you guys know this is the torch I can do everything and anything big boxes everything with this torch um, so butane fuel Sell me the extra, <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> all the tools are the, on the resource guide, which you can download. So all these tools I'm showing you guys, this is, you can, you can download these. We have a whole list that you can get all these tools. In fact, if you're in Alchemy and Soldering, these are all the tools that you're going to use. These are the tools in the resource guide that um, go with it. This is like a $25 torch. I use this for everything. Butane fuel, it's nice and safe. It's a cooler gas than some of the other gases. So, and actually the fumes of it sink. So um, you actually don't even have to have as much ventilation. This setup here is perfect 
for San Francisco people who have tiny homes, if you have a very tiny studio, or if you have a home studio that's not well ventilated, this kit that I'm showing you is gonna work well. This torch is gonna work well. So the way you just put it together, there's a little notch in here like this, and you're just gonna slide it on this notch and oop, turn it around, and you've got yourself a nice torch. You can, you know, in the video, I think I show you guys if I need this, um, you know, I show you guys how much um, an inch, half an inch torch for soldering different things. So that's one, the torch. Okay, the next thing I have in here, this, this one is pretty heavy. I have got some, let me pull this out. I actually have a manual. This isn't one that I'd necessarily recommend. I've seen gorgeous tools. This one works fine though. This is actually a manual drill because when you get into saw anything, you're gonna need to drill. So a manual drill, which works beautifully, and ooh, I hope I didn't spill. Liver of sulfur, you can smell anywhere. I actually have a container in here because this container for me is holds all of my, I actually can use this as a pickle pot if need be. I would have to put hot pieces into my pickle or let my pieces sit longer in pickle. But these extra containers, if I didn't have a pickle pot with me, which there is one in the, um, there is a small pickle pot that you can get that's in the traveling. I just can't fit it in my bag, so. Okay, flux, I brought a container of flux. I brought a container of pickle. This is just a small container of pickle because it fits in here beautifully. I brought a, bought a small container of liver of sulfur that can be mixed with water. I have a easy solder. I have a hard solder. I have a medium solder. This is all on this is all on the list. I actually instead of wash rags, you can bring along, you know, just a a wash rag rather than paper towels. Good morning, Jan. Good morning, Jan. Good morning, everybody. I'm actually just going through all the tools here. So these are all the pieces that just fit in here beautifully. Um, you could actually put two you know, one more container together with this and you'd have like a water quencher, you'd have a pickle pot, you'd have liver sulfur. Liver sulfur would work if you just let your sterling silver soak longer. So that's kind of what you'd have to do too. Okay, so here's our kit. I'll show you guys a picture of everything in the end. Hello everybody. Hi Joanna. Um, I am talking sandpaper. I'm just showing the whole kit here that fit right into this container. I need a rubber mallet. This one's a little bit heavy, but man, do I love this rubber mallet. This is for flattening your pieces. This is for, you know, kind of shaping your pieces around a ring mandrel. And this is, I'm gonna pull out one of my very favorite, these are down at the bottom. But as long as I'm getting into my tools, this is my hammer that I love and adore. I talked a little bit, this one too. This one actually has a nice, weight to it. So if I'm shaping what the purpose of this hammer, you can see how well used it is. If I'm shaping metal or, you know, a ring, a ring band or anything, I can get some nice weight on here without making any marks on my pieces. So it gives me some nice weight. This one probably weighs uh, maybe a pound and a half. I'll weigh this one for you guys. I bet this weighs maybe a pound and a half. This one actually is heavier than my hammer. So I really like a nice, heavy piece for flattening. Make sense? Oh, nice to see you, Cece. Oh, this is my hammer. You know, I talked about, I really like this company. It's on the, um, it's on our list that I showed you guys. This one's on our list. Oh, there we go. Let's get, this is a great photo for a hammer. <laughs> um, this one actually has a really nice place to hold my hand. You, want, you don't want your hammer to be top heavy. You know, you really want your hammer to um, be able to swing on its own accord. So this is my, I'm gonna put the box, the container to the side now that you guys have seen it all. So you really want your hammer to be able to swing to the side. And in here, I also have packed up, it's towards the bottom though. The way that I had to pack things, it's, it's my anvils down there and the rubber that goes with it. So um, when I pull that out, which is toward the bottom, so then I'll be able to show you how the hammer works a little more. Good morning, everybody. I'm showing the um, $250 Nomadic Toolkit that I carry on my back in this 
in this nice container. I'm gonna have this as a backpack. I'll put it all on after I after I get done showing you guys. But I have built all of my jewelry that I have here with this tool kit. So it's pretty cool, you know, if you're on the move or if you have a small studio or, you know, you're not able to have a really big studio with a lot of ventilation, this is the type of gas that's gonna work better for you. It actually sinks so you're not breathing in fumes. And um, hand drills, you know, polishers, filers, a lot of traditional goldsmiths do all of their work by hand. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of people that I know that do work by hand. So when I'm here in my studio, I do a lot of machine work, but on the road in India, on the road in Morocco, on the road in Mexico, it was really cool. One of the things I loved about Mexico is that we used all of these tools. Uh, I, I don't even think we had a chop key for a couple days. So we used the hand drill, all this. Aw, hi you guys, nice to see you. There's more. I actually had this little wallet that came with mine, but you can put little packages in here. This is kind of this immediate set that helps me to solder. I, so I set it right next to my bench. And to me, I've got three, I'm not gonna put any of these down. I've got my three pliers. One of them is a needle nose plier. One of them is a, oop, is, oh my God, these are my very favorite. These are actually a um, chain nose that are tapered and they are my very favorite. I set gems with these and then these are, you really just need three, you get four with the Revere pliers, but these are my very favorite. You can see they don't have springs. Another thing I do is I show you if you do buy an inexpensive pair of pliers, uh, how to take the springs off. Pliers are, hello there, nice to see you, Tanya. I'm just showing all the, the tools here. Um, you, I cannot get through the airport, so this would have to be checked in my baggage. So all of this would be checked in my baggage, but when I get out, I can carry it on my back, you know, or bring it up to my hotel room. There would, you know, I'd be fine in my hotel room if I was traveling. I'd be fine in the middle of a field, as long as I could get out a little bit of water, bring a jug of water with you. So this would all have to be checked under, and you couldn't bring the gas can on. So the nice thing is, is that Amazon sells the gas tank. So you would just bring this in and Amazon, uh, you could have it shipped. I've had it shipped in Morocco. I'm actually teaching a workshop out there. So we're, there's um, in India, there's a really big company that is, it's Alibaba. And it's like, uh, you know, there's also like an Amazon in Europe. So you can get your, your um, butane shipped to you. You just can't put it on the airplane. <laughs> So, yeah, put it, put them in a pouch so then it doesn't scratch things. So these pliers, all three of these pliers are really, I'm going to pick up the whole handful that I had before. So these pliers are really essential. I have had people come into my workshop with crappy pliers that aren't strong, that have the springs on them, and they've struggled with their work. And, you know, I've just had to say, hey, check out these pliers. Um, these are actually built from orthodontist pliers. So if you can also find orthodontist pliers, these are nice and sturdy. You know, from the dental world, you're gonna have some pretty strong pieces in there, right? Any chance I'll work with a group in Mexico to make these types of bags? I might. Keep your eyes out, I'm excited about it. I do love this bag a lot. Oops, my necklace I have down a couple times and it kind of broke open, but um, yeah, so I'm actually thinking about it, guys. There's a couple things I'm thinking about. I really started working a lot with leather. You guys will see what's upcoming. It's been really fun. I don't know, you know, for me and my history, it's like I studied, um, I didn't study fashion, but fiber, um, you know, just a lot of pieces, fiber and things like that. And I've done a lot of work like that in the past with leather and with uh, fiber. So we'll see. I might be able to get, you, get some bags out. Wouldn't that be fun? So there's the pliers, you want strong ones. The other, the, the other set that you're really gonna need is a nice set of snips. These are double flush, and they cut a straight line right here. On the other line, you'll have to make it straight. So these are nice. Get with me to have these made in Morocco. Okay, Sandy, I will. Um, so yeah, Morocco, we might. Morocco's in October. The next thing you're gonna need, this is the set that sits right to my right hand 
I showed it in my studio and it's, I brought two paintbrushes, I brought um, a couple files, I brought a couple sm small files. One is a round file and one is like a triangle square file that would work for a lot of things. I have a large one in there but it, it didn't fit in the bag. A pick, you guys are gonna need your soldering pick. This is the scratch, the scratch, two scratch tools. So these are really for cleanup. You know, if you really, your liver of sulfur that I showed you guys, the liver of sulfur really gives you a good hand in, um, you know, if you, if you clean that pickle off really good first, you clean that pickle off so good that your piece is shining. Then you put in liver of sulfur and you're gonna get a nice oily coating. Liver of sulfur is live, it's a live uh, mineral, you know, and it coats your piece and it puts oil on it, it gives you a luscious finish and then you're gonna scratch it back off again. Back in time, before we uh, had all these polishing wheels, people used to use oils from, this, from their skin and put it right onto a jewelry piece to give it that luster, believe it or not. Is that crazy? You know, um, back in time, I used to teach courses in patinas and, you know, this really kind of ancient, you know, and looking up all this ancient type of formulas, uh, really interesting things were used. Like when you did laundry to get your clothes really clean, you would use cow urine. To get a patina, that beautiful blue patina on your silver, you would get to use, you could bury your pieces in like a cat litter box. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. So, you know, oil from your skin was nothing back in time to kind of oil things up. So a small one, a close up one, that's gonna work out well. The other thing I'm gonna need is locking pliers. These are fabulous. There's two pliers that I love. I'll show you the other pair in just a minute. Okay. Okay, let's see. It's hard to hear you when you move. Oh, thank you for telling me. Okay, thank you for telling me. Hi, Joe, nice to see you. All right, Barb, I'll stay up close. I'm, I'm a little bit farther away than normal because I am thought I would be able to lay things out and mostly that was gonna be the focus. But you know what, there is, there is the list um, that you guys see. This is my jeweler saw. I talked about how I really like this Green Lion saw blade saw for traveling just because it doesn't bend. I have the traditional kind, which is $25, that's really put in the kit, just so you don't have to sink a lot of money into things right away. For me, because I've been teaching for so long, I saw people sink so much money into all these different mediums, you know, painting and scrapping and silversmithing and, you know, uh, enameling and you could sink a small fortune into all these different areas, you know. So just start with this and you could build some cool things and expand from there. But this is a little bit more expensive one. You'd need a, a pack of um, saws as well. I didn't pack those in there, but we could. So that's your saw. Here is snips for cutting, wire snips. Nice snips, those are on the, the guide as well. The thing that takes up a lot of room in here for me, I think once I take it out of the container, this is my soldering, uh, this one I think, what is $25? It's on the list as well. So this is a rotating pan. It's small enough. There's, oh, you know what? There's actually even a smaller one. Let me show you. If you, hang on guys. Okay. Oops, didn't mean for that interruption. If you have like room, actually I probably would put one like this in here. So you could get either one, you know, really for traveling. This one is a little heavier, but it's shallow. So it would fit in there nice and easy. But you really do want a rotating pan and then you want um, a small screen. Can you hear me now, Barbara? And you want a thick screen. This is for really big pieces like boxes and when you get into big rings like this, you're gonna wanna heat these up and it helps to encourage heat onto your pieces. When I'm doing tiny little pieces, oh my gosh, do I even have tiny little pieces like this, you know, these rings that actually I'll be giving the second part to you Wednesday on setting the gems in here. And that I use these small screens. This screen, even though it looks crappy, will last a long, long time. Even if there's holes in there, you're gonna be fine. It's gonna last a long time. So that's kind of cool. You certainly go down the rabbit hole with tools, or at least. 
I love tools, but I also love, I think for me, one of my favorite things to do is, um, you know, just different ways to um, start off. You know, it's exciting when you can't have everything, isn't it? It's kind of exciting when you can't have, um, you know, limiting yourself will bring out the most unusual work. Does that make sense? Anytime, like when I was in my 20s and I would build, um, when you don't have access to everything at your fingertips, it leads you to invent more so. So absence is the mother of invention, which is a beautiful statement. If you really want to get to your own work and doing your own work, try the absence of certain things. That's why I really I love starting this tool set. You know, um, I went to Mexico and I worked with this tool set, and I, that was three years ago, and I built all this incredible stuff. We bought coins from the bank in Mexico and came back and melted them down and mixed brass in there and you know made our own just a lot of different things, rolled things out. Like we, we went down to Raw and talk about getting your own work in there. Um, having, having to MacGyver projects forces me to, my, to be my most creative. Thank you, it's so true. It's like, if you really have to make up tools or make up your world, it makes you learn things a different way. When I did my work, I, you know, I was self-taught as a silversmith from being an artist and I moved out to Cleveland and I was up in my studio and I was just working and inventing all of this new work with whatever I thought I had, you know, I mean, I had a drill that was from the hardware store, crazy stuff. And when I put my work out there many years ago, it was uh, the Bean and Button Show and Alice Karash, it was right when she was selling her, her line. She, my work actually kind of went viral and I had some museum exhibits, I had an exhibit at the Smithsonian, I won an award from Dr. Robert Liu at um, Ornament Magazine. The reason I'm bragging about all this, you guys, is that I want to tell you that I was scared. I was asked to teach with the Goldsmith Society and I was really frightened because I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what I'm doing here, you know? So when I see people who are like, I don't even know what I'm doing here, that's good. You're on the track to really inventing something new, you know? You know you're not going to be doing the same work as someone next to you who's using presses and patterns and things that everybody else has, you know? So yeah, so that's really it. So um, the other thing I have in here, this is my anvil. I decided to get an anvil. You know, of course, there's all different kinds of anvil. I just give you guys a flat anvil. But this is nice and heavy. I have a piece of rubber that it sits on. Sometimes if it's too bouncy, I'll put like paper towels in between or a towel in between, you know, and I'm really gonna set this. I, I talk about this in one of my other films. You know, you wanna set this where it's the height. It's gonna be written all over my book. And you really just wanna have a loose hand, not tight, not white and you're just gonna work your piece. And I go through all of this in the book. This one I decided to use a dapping block too. Why not, you know? If something can work two as one, that's great. Okay, just a couple more things I have in here. One of them is my bench pin that goes with, it's just a simple, super simple bench pin that goes with my um, saw. And, you know, the way this hooks on is right like this on a side of a table. I usually put paper towels in there or leather or something to let it hold really well. And then we're almost to the bottom, guys. This is the 250 kit. <laughs> okay, is a marker. One of the most important things, bring two in case you run out of marker. And, um, oops. And... I love these. So sometimes I use these, especially when I'm attaching granulation. The thing that I love about these pliers, I don't even know if they're on the list, I think they're on the extended, is that there's wood here so I can hold these for long periods of time. I don't like the way it is for my carpal tunnel, but sometimes these pliers are essential. If I can use my locking pliers, I do that. This saves my wrist, I can hold things in place, and things are nice. So that's what I like about that. This is for the pickle. You can only use copper for your pickle. So this is, you know, a nice way to do it. And the only other last thing I have in here are my drill bits that go with the hand drill. 
And that is the whole, this is like a kind of a crafty one, but there's beautiful metal, metal pliers. That's my whole everything. So, and this is my bag. There's, I had a different bag for the longest time. So, you know what? Um, I do have a bag and I'm, I think I'm do. I'm going to fill it and maybe do like an auction or something. But this, Sandy, you are out there. You could have gotten one of these. <laughs> So this is it. This is the way, you know, this is me. This is the way I'm walking through the world. There's my bag. So that is all. This is so helpful. And I'll be talking back and forth between homes for the next year. Yay. Definitely. A travel desk is part of my bag too. There's so much more you can do. I'm, and here my necklace is coming undone. Oh well. Um, so there's so much more you can do you know, with your bag, however much you can afford to bring. When we go to Morocco, I'm just going to be asking people to bring these tools with, except for the gas. I'll have this waiting for us out there. When we go to Mexico, I have the gas waiting out there. When we go to India, the gas is waiting out there, you know? So really, it's really exciting to think about, you know, not investing a ton of money first off. See if you like silversmithing if you're brand new. See if you like this process, do things by hand. It's so inventive. You're so, so inventive when you're using files and, you know, um, hand drills. And, um, you know, there, there's groups of people that use, you, you can really go a long way, you know, with, the, with these tools. So that was exciting for me to see. I always really like trying different, like things that are different. You know, I like trying a challenge. When I wrote, like when I wrote my book, Making Connections, I walked all around the world for three years. I didn't solder, I didn't glue, I didn't do any of that. And I just found ways to attach things, cold join. I wanted to put together everything and everything I possibly wanted to put together and have it be cold joined. Does that make sense? So with this, I just love the idea of walking around in the world and being, you know, not being limited and being able to create all of these things that you guys see here. You know, really, this is all done with the whole process. So in the Alchemy of Soldering, watch it over and over again. It's going to be up there. Alchemy of Soldering will be free for the until the end of Jan until the end of January, end of February. It'll be up there free for the end of February. So just you know, watch it, get it down, get the rules. If you guys decide you want to move on from there, I have the Intentional Metalsmithing course, and you can pick or choose, or you can take the whole course. I'm going to be here on the Alchemy of Soldering like this. You know, I'll be showing up and answering questions and helping people out and Christina too. This is what we do, right guys? So, and traveling, I'll be traveling. Maybe I'll show up from India. Maybe I'll show up from Milan. I'm gonna be, you know, I'm getting all my Milan pieces ready now. So, um, do I need a fire extinguisher ha handy? I have a fire extinguisher in my studio. I don't, you know, when I'm, I usually think of myself with my nomadic kit, I usually think of myself outdoor. If you are, if you have a small space, like I taught a workshop once in San Francisco and I realized with so many people in San Francisco, people had small homes there, you know, which we don't have in the Midwest and like in Chicago, we've got big spaces because we're in for the winter. But in San Francisco, people were coming from having small spaces so I realized that this group I was teaching in San Francisco, I was really talking to them about how to put together a small studio. So if I was indoor, I would definitely have a fire extinguisher. I have one here, just I don't have one on the road um, with me, but definitely. So uh, do you have trouble finding butane for your torch to fit my torch? No, this is the kind, this is at Walmart, if you can get there. It's at Walmart, it's at hardware stores with that little notch. This is what you need is that little notch right there. Otherwise, Amazon has it. So I literally, you can get one shipped to you or you can get a dozen shipped to you. So I usually get a dozen shipped to me, Amazon. It just takes like three days. They're not gonna ship it overnight. So Amazon will take a couple days. Hardware stores, Walmart has it, makes sense? Um, I used for the whole filming of Alchemy and Soldering and the whole um, Intentional Metal Smithing, I used one can. I used one torch for all those pieces that I built. So isn't that pretty cool? <laughs> okay, um, where do, oh, where do I get my, okay, so all the materials that we use, 
That is, I, you know, there's, I like to use small jewelers. There's Halstead Jewelers. There's um, Thunderbird, which is in Albuquerque. They were some of the original, and this is like an Indian, um, they were some of the original jewelers. There's, oh my gosh, I have to show you guys this. This is where I learned it. Let me see if I can find it. Um, where is it? Here it is. No, I have a lot of these books. There's there's books that are done with from Indian Jeweler Supply. It was some of my first books. It's actually on my list. Um, on my, I've got a list of books that I recommend um, on YouTube. For YouTube, no, on Amazon. I've got on my Amazon, and Christina probably will pop up my Amazon. If you guys don't know my Amazon, I have a list of. Um, tools that I recommend, but every chapter that you go into to find your silver, to find your wire, I have a list of what materials you're going to use to put this project together. Does that make sense? So you're going to get a good idea of ordering them. Uh, this book that I'm finishing for intentional metal smithing, it talks all about, oh my gosh, it's like I love tools. As much as I love tools, I love wires. I love sheet metal. I get into the whole philosophy of whys and hows and you know, what they look like and pictures of them and all types of fancy wires. And so the book, you know, we're, the book actually will be coming out soon with one of the programs. So Christine and I, I spent all of November, December. We have it over to the um, graphic designer and we're getting that set up. So there will be a book that you can get to go with the course that talks all about, you know, the philosophy of soldering um, in words, if you can understand from words, you know, uh, it talks about the sheet metal and how, why, and how you want to buy certain sheet metals and all of this. So this is all coming. You're just popping on. Nice to see you, Misty. Great. <laughs> oh, thank you. You can see it, huh? There's my big fringe collar and there's my other piece. That one I have um, coming. I have some gorgeous model photos coming up soon and I have, um, the performance coming up soon. You guys will get to see the performance. That's due, I think, the 13th. So there. Um, okay, I popped in. He had monitoring. Oh, good. Oh, I'm so glad to see you, Sherry. And um, you can't take butane on the plane. You would order it and ship it to your destination. Okay, so there you go. Okay, there's Christine's got it on here on Amazon. So that's where I have a lot of books that I recommend. Um, one of them, so Thunderbird, of course, Rio Grande, there's Rio Grande. We always like to give small, you know, we always like to give small businesses business. Does that make sense? So, um, Thunderbird, I love those guys. We, there was always Indian jeweler supply, but they actually ended up going bankrupt. And when you go to Tucson, you meet everybody who, um, the guys are there. Like Danny Wade was actually one of the owners. It was a staff, the staff owned the company, which was a pretty cool philosophy. I really like that, and I wish they still were around. So, now, um, so you know what, Sherry? I just showed everybody the whole uh, container. Oh, look, I have to scroll down. The whole container, Sherry. Okay, Sherry, this is the bag Sandy's talking about. You guys were out there. Remember, Pam and I got the bag. I had all of my materials put in here, and I wore it as a backpack. So this is what I carry around. So I am going to do an auction. I have two. I have one black one. I think the black one is going to the auction. I think the black one is going to be auctioned with all the supplies. So keep your eyes out for that. That'd be really cool. Um, okay. I know. Remember our guy? He, he handmade them, so they're one of a kind. But we are. We're, I'm looking to maybe get some leather in the future. I think it'd be pretty amazing, you know. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, the bags, but all kinds of leather bags. Oh my gosh, you guys saw my doctor's bag that I had. That one was from Paris. <laughs> they found it after we were. Yes. You're, oh, you're right. I forgot. Yeah, you guys were out of town. You guys left and got to go see Frida Kahlo. These guys went and saw Frida Kahlo's place, so that was pretty fun. So this is all recorded, all the tools. This is of the initial set. I, because I like to stand behind my words, I literally um, 
for a long period of time, um, I built all of the jewelry I was doing, which is including this piece here. I built the jewelry with this setup that I just gave you guys, you know? And then the gems, you guys, I do have the gems. I do have these gems here. I think my site is getting back opened up again. I just ordered some new ones. If you're looking for little gems or, um, you know, any type of gems, I try to put them in $100 packages of mixed of how I put together rings or earrings. And then I also have like some $200 packages too that are beautiful. So that's on my Shopify site. And I am having a gorgeous jewelry sale. I'm so excited about this jewelry sale Friday because we've just, I'm putting a diff, some different work into it. So if anyone is wanting any pieces to inspire them, that's Friday. And Friday we also, I'm, we will have, Christine and I, we've been working so hard behind the scenes We'll have it open where if you decide to move on in intentional metal smithing and take some courses or take the whole course, signups start Friday. So that's really exciting. We're working pretty hard behind the scenes. Tell them about my experiment in using this setup. Do you mean, um, do you mean when I was in Mexico, Christina, in using this setup? So I originally, what kind of drew me this direction is I went to, um, I went to my friend of mine's studio in Mexico, who lives in San Miguel. He grew up, he was a little kid there, and he learned silversmithing in the 60s and 70s. Like, okay, San Miguel was opened up for the baby boomers as this area where it was a university where you could come and learn crafts. Crafts was a new thing for the baby boomers. You know, it's kind of what they started with jewelry, clay, teapots, all of this. So, um, oh, there we go. So uh, I ended up, so he was a little kid and he learned how to build silver in, in a way that we didn't learn here in the United States. We learned this real formal, because to the, us here in the United States, if you think about it, a goldsmith talks about the quality of a gem or the fine silver or gold and the materials. We're building our jewelry as an art piece. We're building it for ourselves. You know, for me, I did a lot of ethnographic repair. I have witnessed a lot of dancing and costumes. And, you know, I, I did ethnographic repair for two years. I was a buyer from West Africa. We bought West African costumes and dances and jewelry and all of this. You know, it was really interesting for me. So I come from a background of, and I studied talisman. So it's like, I love just how jewelry expresses itself. So, and that's how this man was too. You know, in the United States, we have more of a limited because we're such a new country. So we have more of a limited viewpoint of like gold rings or they have to be a certain size or, you know, look a certain way. So I went out there, he, he invited me out to his studio and we literally bought coins from the bank and we went back into his studio and melted down coins and threw brass in there and poured an ingot, red hot, poured an ingot, rolled it through rolling mills, um, you know, rolled it to the sheet we needed, pulled our wire. We did everything from scratch. We made our own solder. The solder was beautiful. We made it a little bit higher content of silver than sterling silver. So I found I hardly had to put it in the pickle. It was pretty cool. Any, actually, a lot of the silver that you get from me, the handmade silver, it's a little higher content if I'm making my own silver because I love working with the higher content. Just a couple, you know, couple, couple ounces more. Um, <laughs> aw, good. Um, so yes, Christina, as you guys know, Christina has, um, aw, nice. Christina has a business. She, she actually has a meeting on Sundays and she has a business course for artists too. So make sure you check out Christina's information that she has. It's been, she is my right hand man here and is full of information. We're actually doing this whole new launch together and she, it's, we're tired, but we're, it's pretty cool. So, um, so anyway, with my friend, I was out there and it was a really nice discipline. I just really had this working toolkit right here. We didn't even have our pickle that was hot. It was cold pickle and we just had to let it sit in there longer. And we didn't have electricity there. You know, it was really fun. So I did all of this work and that was three years ago. And I was there for like a month and a half. And the pieces that I built was interesting because when I was out there, 
I had a stylist contact me that wanted some of my work to go to Coachella. I had another stylist that wanted to put me in British Vogue that, you know, was it, it was British Vogue editor, but she put my work in another publication. So it was really cool. Um, it was a couple years ago, what was the name of it? I'll write it down. I'll get the issue. It was a brand new one. So it was a premiere issue and it was British Vogue editor that was putting together a new publication. So it was kind of cool, you know, so definitely because the pieces were different. So I'm always talking to you guys about working on your own work. When you're in intentional metalsmithing, I'm talking to you about really making sure that you do your authentic work and you move forward with your own voice so it's different than anyone else. You can follow along and do exactly what I'm doing to start, but then you're gonna start moving into your own work because if you do your own work, you can be recognized and you're actually putting your own vibration out in the world and you're gonna get your own people that follow your own work. Makes sense? So that's a really important element if you're going to be a jewelry designer, whether you're showing up at, um, you know, whether you're showing up at at the retail events or you're deciding to put a wholesale line together, uh, on Thursday I do jewelry talk and I'm on my Instagram site and I actually have a subject that I want to talk about and that's kind of like being prepared for the direction that you're choosing to go. You know, it's not all magical. It's like yes, we can do magical and do our spiritual. But it really, you know, these other elements of really putting things into action are important steps too. And to really think about, you know, I want to talk about really just from a few emails and things that I've gotten from people that have asked me questions, you know. Um, like someone asked me, hey, I put together a wholesale line and I showed up at this event and no one bought from me. What did I do wrong? And I was like, whoa, okay. So that's kind of Thursday. I want to talk maybe a little bit about that Thursday. Um, yeah, oh, I do talk Christine up. You just have to pop over to her site. Really, she does. We, she is, so pop over to Christina's. It, she is, um, get to the art. But yeah, she, she has an amazing program there. But yes, this is about, this is my site and this is about my stuff. <laughs> so go to Christina's site and it's about Christina's stuff. Makes sense? <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, Christine is on Facebook and it's Get to the Art, but also, you know, you can pop over, there she is right there, pop onto her name and you can get to her Facebook page. Okay, you guys, is there any questions about the tools? I'm going to put this down where you guys can maybe see the tools. They're not laid out as beautiful, but they're laid out beautiful on the site. You guys will get to see them laid out beautiful on that site. So um, does that make sense with the tools? Alchemy of Soldering. So don't forget, get in there, watch the um, Alchemy of Soldering, see if you guys want to go a little further. You could really learn so much. You can see what a lot of the students are doing and have done. I am so impressed with the students who have went through intentional metalsmithing. Oh my gosh, I'm so impressed. And now, you know, some people were goldsmiths to start with, and some people are, were not goldsmiths to start with. And, you know, some people were beginners, some people were in between, but it really gives you a pathway and it gets you thinking about where you're going. <laughs> I crack her up, I know. <laughs> See, oh, it's all about, yeah, okay. So, um, so there we go, so. Okay, so announcements are coming up. We like how you were slinging my neck piece. Thank you, it is. It's like a scarf that's around my neck, so it's true, I did it that way today. Fisker's hand drill work perfectly. They work perfectly. You could buy, no, if you have a Fisker's, just use that. This um, is, works the same way. To me, I, you know, I, you could find one at a garage sale, that's amazing, but this one works perfect too. I, I don't think they're that expensive. And some people have these around. New style. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, a new style, see? So, all right, you guys, today I have on my agenda, I'm getting... Um, this week, by the end of the week, I have the rest of my Milan pieces that are due. And, um, and uh, so those pieces are due. So that's what I'm going to be is in my studio all week long. But I'll see you guys Wednesday. I'm showing the next part of Stacker Rings on here. And I have my gem store open. So you guys are welcome to pop over onto Jewels of the Nomad. And um, there's some pretty good priced gems on there if anyone needs any. 
Um, oh, you're totally a beginner. Oh, see, thank you so much, Misty. Misty says that it's really a powerful, thank you. I love, I mean, I kind of see the results as people build, you know, and I suggest be in your studio, you know, three times a week and you will grow. I promise you, there's no way you're not going to grow. Be in your studio three times a week and you're going to grow. So maybe we'll see you guys look out for things that are coming too. So we have a lot on the agenda. So nice to see you guys this morning. I think this has been, um, almost an hour. So I bet, oh, 45 minutes. So there we go. Is there any other questions? She's going to post a link to the gems in just a few minutes. Christina. Well, thank you, Christina. I tell you, she's amazing to me. Oh, yay. Good, Tanya. You're getting over your fear of soldering. This is a nice can to start with because, I mean, I have my, um, I actually have all of my um, acetylene tanks over there, but the acetylene tanks, it, you have to be worried about because you need a lot of ventilation with acetylene. You have to be careful. There's, you know, there's so many more things you have to look out for because acetylene is a super hot gas. They're super large and it, you know, it could be much more dangerous. I used to wear um, a mask when I would use my acetylene and I was in and uh, I rented an old hardware store. It was this gorgeous old hardware store from the 1800s and I was using my um, acetylene and the people upstairs, I was fine, I had my mask on, the people upstairs, their carbon monoxide alarm would go off just, you know, so I realized I had to get in like a super good even though I was wearing it, I had to protect other people, you know? So, oh, anyway, you just have to be very careful if you're using your acetylene. Here, I've got good ventilation if I want to use my acetylene, but I am actually using this. I don't know when I'm going to go back to my acetylene, but for now, I've got some trips coming up, so I want to still remember how to use my traveling set. Make sense? Have a lovely day. Thank you. Oh, yay. There you go, guys. Have fun in soldering. Enjoy yourself. Wake up and feel good. Do that, do that artist breath, the yoga breath. Arrive to your studio and you're going to be you. Walk through the world being you and your work can't help to be you. Make sense? Okay, you guys. There's nothing that would be wrong. Your dad worked with the acetylene. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, butane, it's, it's a cooler gas. It's not going to explode on you, so things should be good. Thank you so much, you guys. Love you guys all and have fun building.